Hello everybody, this is Manu S and welcome back to another MTG Arena Top Decks video series here on my channel. Um, today I want to talk about um, a, a post Ravnica Allegiance update to Mono Blue, which also has graduated from a contender to a top deck, I would say, since um, yeah, Alexander Hain at the moment is holding rank 1 Mythic uh, with a version that is uh, very similar to the one that I'll be talking about in a moment. And yeah, the deck really seems to be doing very well in best of three, especially for now, but also probably in best of one. So it's definitely a very good deck and it's time to update it with the Ravnica Legions cards and talk a bit about the list and also the subtle differences between mine and Alex's list. Okay, so here is the deck list. Let's go over the list. We have 10 one drops. That's one of the small differences to Alex's list. He has 11. I'm not that big of a fan of too many of these one mana one ones because they don't do that much. Um, I can see why he wants them. They give you a bit more nut draw potential, but if you don't draw an obsession, they're really not that great. I don't feel like you absolutely want a one drop turn one every time unless you have something that makes them matter. So um, I decided to go down to two Mistcloaked Herald. I'll talk about um, what I replaced them with in a moment. So yeah, um, the big update here is obviously Terramander, which gives the deck both more one drops that carry Curious Obsession and are hard to block, but also virtually later gives you more uh, Tempest Gin sized creatures to actually win the game and win the game with like a standalone threat. So that is a really big deal. The deck is not super good at reducing the adapt cost, but it's usually somewhere between like 3 and 5, and in the late game it can actually become really cheap. Um, so yeah, this is uh, probably the greatest addition from the new set. It seemed, might seem subtle, but it actually ups the um, consistency and power level of the deck quite a bit, because before you only have like this chip shot damage and for Tempest Gin, and now you have a more consistent early game with the chip shot damage, and Obsession game, but you also have a better Tempest Gin game because you suddenly have eight virtual Tempest Gins, which is a very big deal. So basically, the um, Warkite Marauders have gone, uh, like are gone for two more uh, one drops, basically two uh, Terramanda and two Heralds became Terramanders compared to the last version. Also nice because Chain Whirler is still a prominent card and kind of an issue with a lot of one toughness uh, creatures so having 10 instead of 11 or 12 uh, is kind of good another reason why i'm not the biggest fan of uh, the third herald and also it lowers the curve a bit and uh, frees up room for a couple of other two cost cards that do other things that i'll talk about in a moment then um, we have still four obsession we have only three dive down. Alex even has only two. I could see going down to three from the four that the deck used to run because the card is a bit situational. It um, sometimes drawing multiple copies can be awkward, but the card still does a bunch of things. It counters a lot of stuff other than sweepers, but there are a bit more sweepers, which is why it is a little weaker, where like spell peers still um, stop sweepers as well and spot removal in the early game especially because most removal in the game cost two or three so it's or even four so it's fairly susceptible to spell pierce for a long time and the other thing is like dive down is a combat trick it lets you win combat sometimes like i have won combats with tempest chins against other flyers thanks to dive down and stuff like that so it definitely serves its purpose so i still want to draw one in most of my games which is why i like three so I basically cut the third herald for the third dive down from Alex's list. Because that just feels wrong to only run two. He said he had three in the beginning and then cut the third for the third spell pierce. But I feel like um, if even Drakes can run like three dive down and three pierce, um, this deck can so even more. And also one so even more because it's so important. And the old lists had like four dive down and one to two spell pierce usually. I think the one in my last video had two spell pierce. So it still had six, so I just kind of swapped a dive down for a spell pierce compared to, compared to the old list. 
Then we have for opt. Not much explanation needed here, just smooths out the draws. Becomes a bit more important now with Terramander because it's a spell that reduces the adapt cost. It um, also is part of what's, what allows us to run 19 lands. Like red and white decks usually run 20 with a similar curve, but they don't have opt to smooth out their draws. So it's reasonable that, um, oh, sorry about that, that mono blue can afford to run 19 lands with uh, opt since four cantrips, especially like selective cantrips like that, kind of allow you to run, uh, cut one land usually. And we also have obsession as well to hit our land drops that the blue and white deck, uh, the red and white decks don't have. So I was a bit skeptical of the 19 land at first, but so far it has been fine. To be fair, I don't think you can go wrong with 20 lands. It will make your deck a bit um, more consistent and also it will make you flood out a little bit more but you have the card draw and stuff. So the main uh, thing that 19 lands allows you is flood a little less and squeeze in that one additional uh, yeah, utility card, basically. Uh, in this case, Blink of an Eye that we'll talk about in a moment. But I'll play it more with 19 lands. And if I somehow feel over long term that it's too greedy, I might go back. 220 because the deck actually makes good use of land drops thanks to uh, wanting to deploy to deploy something like Jin and protecting it or adapting Terra Manda. So the 20s land really isn't that bad. But right now I like the other cards better in this version and the 19 land has felt quite good. The third chart of course also helps a bit with the 19 land since it makes it much more likely to hit that third land. And yeah, then we have the three spell pierce. Spell pierce seems really good right now. There's a lot of planeswalkers and two to four cost removal and stuff. Um, there are the nexus decks and stuff that have, and the gate decks that have a lot of non creature spells of all sorts that this is good against. So it's just um, a pretty strong counter spell right now. Then we still have Firm former folk trickster, um, just a very good flexible trick for the deck offensively and defensively. It's also a wizard for wizard retort, which, which is very important. Then we have one blink of an eye. That's the one card that I was a bit skeptical about uh, when uh, uh, yeah, I saw Alex's list, but I talked to him about and he was like, he added it because he felt like um, sometimes stuff kind of slips under your, um, your defenses and you might want to like be able to bounce it. And so far it has been playing pretty decently. There are a couple of things that could be problematic uh, sometimes, like a big flying blocker or certain blades walkers, stuff like that, or like something racing you. Um, and yeah, with more mirror matches, this is particularly nice because obviously the mirror getting having a way to bounce their uh, obsession creature as a surprise when they think you cannot do anything against it. Um, is also pretty good. But that's one of the slots that I'm not 100% convinced of. But so far, when I played with it, it was alright. But it's one of the cards that I kind of keeping an eye on. No pun intended. Um, yeah, one other thing that more 1 drops and less 2 drops allows is more charter cards. Because the more 2 drops you have, the less additional 2 cost cards you want. Because it makes your deck more clunky. Also, having a 1 drop means you can charter course on 2. So having more turn one one drops means you can more reliably draw two cards on turn two when you kind of don't need to have your shields up yet. And it also helps with the 19 lands um, and stuff like that. And it also helps with drawing a bunch of one drops but no obsession because it gives you card advantage still and makes sure you have enough impact. So uh, yeah, I like the card. Um, the reason why there is no 4 is the card is still kind of clunky and tempo inefficient. So um, you might not always have time to play it, especially play a second copy. Uh, so drawing multiple copies can be like cluster. 3 is nice, drawing 1 usually works out well, but the second can be problematic. And then there's one Essence Capture. Essence Capture is basically better enough than Essence Scatter, together with a couple of prominent uh, annoying flyers like Traces, um, Lyra, or um, the Drakes and stuff like that, um, and giving you kind of an attack boost, making up for 
Herald being a 1-1 one, one and not a 2-1 like Warkite, Marauder and stuff. Mix is an appealing option. It's also one of the cards that is not 100% set in stone and I could see being a bit more of a flex slot. So the two most flexible slots I think in this version right now are probably the blink of an eye and the capture. But yeah, having a bit more ways to stop um, creature based problematic cards, also like Hostage Taker or Trooper Cabra and stuff like that, uh, are potential nice targets for this. Or simply stopping a Wild Crows Walker on the play or even getting their Jade Light Ranger turn can do good things and up your clock. But I would recommend not playing too many of these. They are a bit situational and clunky, and if you don't have a creature out, they're also underwhelming. But one, it's kind of the typical card to have one. It's kind of like your fifth three card that hits um, creatures, and you have like three more um, counter spells for spells. So you have like seven counters for spells, and five for creatures, and then a bunch for like targeted stuff. And yeah, then we have the four Tempest Gin and four Retort, just like before. Counterspell is good, and this is Counterspell a lot of the time in this deck. And yeah, this Gin is, uh, together with Obsession, the bread and butter of the deck. Really powerful card. And then 19 Islands. And since this, since we have best of three ranked now, um, I will try and focus my deck tags on 75 cards. The lists are still playable in best of one, but they pr they contain the sideboard for best of three play. Best of three is the most relevant format in Magic still, also for paper players, making these deck tags also relevant to paper players. Um, okay, so first we have two fairy duelist. Um, I had two in the main for a while in a version before I saw Alexis. Um, over two of the four Warkite Marauder that I used to run as a hedge against red and white aggro and against Chain Whirler specifically because they survived Chain Whirler and uh, also happen to be pretty good against red. And I was very impressed with these. I understand why you might not want the main deck, especially if you have a sideboard um, because they can be a bit low impact. But they are super amazing. Like when they're good, they are insane. So they are um, nice against the monocolor decks, especially like mono blue. Uh, but uh, mostly mono red and uh, mono white. They're like a brutal two for one usually, and then even stall some of their one ones. The card is surprisingly powerful, is all I can say. And uh, nice to see that Alex seems to think the same and also figured out how how good of an addition it is to the deck. And yeah, in best of one, if you face a lot of red and white aggro decks, I can totally see. Uh, Playing two main deck, they are uh, good enough all around. Usually, that if you play those matchups a lot, they are worth it. And the other matchups, they are still an okay instant speed threat that carries an obsession and can buy you some time or even make a make a nice block happen. Then we have three negate for the controlling reactive matchups to fight sweepers and planeswalkers and stuff. Two is a bit expensive, but um, yeah, if you can just stop all the relevant things like planeswalkers and sweepers or even the expensive removal, um, you should be good. And yeah, counters is just kind of what the deck wants. And then post post board, you end up having like three negates, three spell peers, or retort. That's a lot of cheap counter magic to slog through. Plus, of course, the storm tables. Sorry, the Storm Tamers and Dive Downs against uh, their spot removal, making it very hard for them to interact with you in any meaningful way. Then we have Surge Mare. This is mainly for um, this is mainly for mono red, but it's also decent against mono white. It's basically just a very solid blocker. Um, against mono white, it's not quite good enough. But against um, mono red, five toughness blocker is exactly what you need in the early game to not be run over. And yeah, against like dual mono green type stuff, which apparently seems to be a thing occasionally uh, on arena, this uh, also 
comes in handy because it both carries a obsession really well and can apply a lot of pressure on offense. Granted, you have the mana that you don't need, and until then, it's actually a pretty good blocker tool for the early uh, creatures, including something like Spellbreaker and stuff. So, uh, yeah, just a bit more flexible of a card than Diamond Mare would be. Sure, Diamond Mare might be better against red, but it's not even necessarily better against red because it's a 1-3, so it dies to all the burn spells. So it usually just kind of trades one for one. All this uh, needs to eat two burn spells or eat a burn spell and gain you like um, two or three life from blocking, making uh, this a bit more reliable than Diamond Mare and also being able to come in and screen decks Diamond Mare wouldn't be great. Then we have Deep Freeze, which is kind of like removal spell. There are uh, a couple of things that yeah, you otherwise have no business beating. One of them being Niv Mizzet. That's the biggest thing, actually. The deck just cannot counter it. It does not have a way to beat Niv Mizzet. And this is kind of your shot at dealing with Niv Mizzet. It also is a good way of dealing with something like Lyra. So it's basically a solid card against like Jeskai and Drake's type type decks and gives you an out to uh, certain problems that otherwise probably cost you the game if miss it is the biggest one so i like the idea haven't uh, really faced matchups yet where i got to use them but uh, yeah that was the uh, reason that alex had them for and i can see that making sense then we have a couple of exclusion majors they're very good in the mirror. I expect the mirror to be more and more of a big deal with the deck doing well and Ain promoting it being on rank one. Um, it also happens to um, come in handy against like the green decks that I mentioned earlier. It's uh, good against white weenie. So there are a couple of matchups where uh, this does a good job of like keeping you alive. And even against what we need, it can kill some, sometimes kill a token, which makes it even better. Then we have one Jace, Cunning Castaway. Uh, Alex has a search for Skanta here. I, uh, in theory, I like Jace better. He has been pretty, uh, pretty fond of search for Skanta, but I don't like that it basically has no board impact and is kind of low and incremental at what it does. Well, if you slam this and they cannot answer it, it just is going to win you the game on its own. And I feel like that's the kind of card you want against control. It either immediately creates a creature threat, um, if you need one, or otherwise you just tick it up, uh, loot through your deck twice, <clears throat> and then you make two copies, and then it runs away with the game. And um, control decks don't have a lot of ways to deal with this. Like, Esper has, like, two Contempt, usually, I think. <clears throat> and they might even board them out, because... They are too clunky against you. And you also have ways to protect <laughs> Jace um, with Spell Pierce, for example. So playing this on like 4 mana with a Spell Pierce <clears throat> seems really, really strong. Um, and overall, I think this is a bit better uh, singleton uh, standalone threat than Search for Skanta. But I could be wrong there. Yeah. It's a bit more proactive, among others, which is uh, what I really like about it. Um, and last but not least, we have two Entrancing Melody. That card was already good before, and now it's even better because for four mana it steals a, a Hydroid Crassus of any size, which is a really big deal, which is one of the biggest uh, things it does. So you bring it in against Crassus decks, but you also bring it in against uh, <coughs> White Weenie especially. So it's like basically for Sultai. White Weenie, you can also bring it in against like green decks, and it's also still um, fine against mono red, depends on how many creatures they play, but it's not that great there, but anything that basically yeah, fights, fights their stuff and slows them down is worth it. And in the mirror, this is obviously a killer card uh, as well, so it's very good against the mono color decks and graces. <coughs> okay. And this is the decklist, 75 cards, 
very close to what is currently holding rank 1 Mythic. Um, and as usual, gonna hop into some games. <clears throat> I decided now with best of 3 ranked and lists having sideboards that I will try and do um, 3 best of 3 matches as videos. Let me know in the comments what you think about that, if you would like to see more, if you rather would see a couple of game 1s in uh, best of 1 uh, and stuff like that to figure out what people prefer. But I felt like 3 best of 3s is good, it's not too long um, and also it um, is kind of what I used to do for like MTG card market for deck techs and stuff. I usually played 8-man eight, eight queues or like 3 matches of leagues once leagues got, got introduced because playing like a whole league on video is probably a bit too long and most people won't watch the whole league. But yeah, uh, let me know what you think. Um, and as usual, before we hop into some games, please subscribe to the channel down below if you haven't yet, and consider whitelisting uh, YouTube on your ad block to help support the free content. I'll be back in a moment with game number one. <laughs> 